to worship as we gather here on this, the fourth Sunday after Easter. Um, it is great to have you all with us. Uh, there are some things to keep you informed of and aware of. As we gather um, in the next couple of weeks, you're going to notice Music Sunday is scheduled for May 22nd. We'll have our bell choir and both of our choirs singing on uh, May 22nd, so you want to come and enjoy that celebration of uh, joy and music. And uh, also, um, I am gonna, I'm gonna leave this in the back of the church, but it is a sign up for Alkalites as well as communion assistance. And I'll share a little bit more. As we are getting back into a normal practice of receiving lines to receive communion, we, uh, we want you to be aware that um, you can still receive communion in the pews. And uh, we have grape juice and wine fellowship cups available for you. But um, we are also inviting you to come forward if you feel comfortable to receive both uh, bread and wine. And we do have grape juice up here this Sunday as well. As, um, as you come forward, simply um, just keep space, but also make um, one line down the middle of the church and then return by the side aisles. If you are going to receive communion in the, um, in the pews, um, just wait for instruction. I will say the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you, and then you can open up your fellowship cup to receive in the pews. Um, th this sign-up is so that we can not have just our council members serve in communion assistance, uh, as well as with alkalites. So on uh, May 22nd, during the Sunday school hour, we're going to be training our alkalites, potential alkalites, and then after church, we're going to have a gathering for anyone that's interested, and we're going to do a training and an orientation. And we promise uh, Norbert and I will be leading that, and it'll be 25 minutes to a half hour. We're just trying to give you uh, the opportunity to pour and uh, feel comfortable in that space. So all are welcome to uh, stick around after church on the 22nd to uh, learn about being a lay communion assistant. Finally, um, we also have our flower bed cleanup and uh, gardening day. That's May 14th, that's next Saturday. Starting at 9 a.m., uh, Dan Wildeson is coming in from North Carolina and he's gonna have a lot of mulch and uh, he was gonna want some help. So if you have that Saturday available, if you can give an hour, you can give multiple hours, hopefully it will be done by, uh, by lunch and uh, that'll take place May 14th, uh, this coming Saturday. Uh, starting at 9 a.m. and uh, we'll finish up then as well. Finally, um, end of Sunday school will be next Sunday. We are having a little uh, breakfast and fellowship. Uh, all are welcome, so during uh, 8.45 to, uh, to 9.45, we're gonna be having our breakfast downstairs in the fellowship hall. If you'd like to bring something, just email me so that I kind of know what's coming and I can suggest if we already have too much of one item but uh, all are welcome, and um, please share uh, uh, food with us as we, uh, we come to an end of Sunday school for the year. That also makes me uh, remind myself of some graduations that are happening. Kate Colgan was, uh, graduated from Penn State uh, last uh, yesterday, I believe, and um, it's amazing. Uh, we've kind of time warped. So uh, for the last two years, I have no idea who's in college, what year they're in college, or even in high school, what years. Um, so if you have a high school graduate or a college graduate, please share that with us. We'd like to make knowledge of that to the congregation. And so we send our blessings to the Colgan family as they celebrated with Kate yesterday at State College. Uh, and uh, a great accomplishment for Kate and the family. Uh, the last thing are a couple of prayer concerns. We want to keep Carm Baker in our prayers. Uh, Carm, uh, in his 90 years, this is probably the, the hardest uh, week that he's ever had. He had a stroke on uh, Tuesday. Um, he did lose function of his right arm, and uh, he is doing really well. Uh, uh, two, mm -hmm. Friday was a really hard day, um, but yesterday I was able to see him at Hanover Hospital and he is doing really well, he's aware, he's knowledgeable of who he is, but it's gonna be a little bit of a, a road to recovery. Um, he was up and moving uh, a little bit yesterday, but he still does not have function in the right side arm, and they're hoping that they can build that back up. It looks like he will be 
at Hanover Hospital until probably Monday, and then he'll go into some form of rehab. So we want to keep Carrie, uh, uh, Kathy, as well as Keith in our prayers as they are his support system, and as well Martha, our former secretary, that she is a, a companion and, and a helper as well. So we keep all of them in our prayers, and especially we keep Carm in our prayers as well. Are there any other announcements? Larry, it's great to have you again. Sorry I didn't make knowledge of that last week, but we also hold you in our prayers as you continue to process and grieve, and, and we also know that there's some transition happening at the house and the homestead, so um, know that we are holding you in prayer, and it's great to have Debbie with us as well, and um, may we uh, fill you with some love this morning, and we, may we all be filled with the resurrection joy we experience. If you are able, I welcome you. Please rise as we open our hearts and minds for worship. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God, who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the city, and through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea from the Israelites. Now, in these waters, you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gates of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm the troubled waters, you nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out in lush and barren places. You are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, and wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and our lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Our first hymn is Good, Fris Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing. We'll sing verses 1 and 4. That's great. 
and snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Before I start, I just want to say I, uh, I missed a, a little announcement. It's actually a big announcement, but giving thanks for the voices that we have heard since birth, the voice of our mothers. It is a great gift to be able to celebrate Mother's Day with many of you as you uh, have that time of tender care with one another. We also know for some, Mother's Day can also be a challenge. Um, and so we ask for the blessings and thanks for mothers, but also the tender care that so many mothers have provided for us as we continue in our time together. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of us be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength, our rock, and our abundance of grace. Amen. Marco! Marco! How many of you have played the game? Raise your hands. All right. How many of you that are under the age of 15 have played that game? Where did you go? All right. All right. It's not, it's not as dead as I thought it might have been. How many of you played the game Marco Polo in the pool? Probably the safest place. How many of you have ever dared to play Marco Polo out in an open field or maybe even where there are poles in a classroom, right? Right, yeah, yeah, the danger. Do you, does anybody still have the knot running through their forehead as they were the, the brave one running after someone? This is the game where, if you've never played Marco Polo, typically we either blindfold the it person and the others spread out among the swimming pool or uh, in the uh, field and we attempt to say, Marco is the caller and the response is Polo and you try to find out where people are without using sight. We hear the voice, and we respond to it, and we go. This game, of course, uh, it can also be um, duplicated in, in, in a trust walk. If you ever have an ability to trust a friend to blindfold you, and then take you on a journey, and you trust that person to not lead you into danger or to lead you into a place where you might get tripped up or hurt. Uh, once in our youth group, we were at the beach, and I was at Rehoboth, and our youth leader took us on a trust walk where she blindfolded 25 of us, and only one of us was un unblindfolded. And we ended up walking over three miles. And it was one of those things where it was a lot of conversation afterwards of just how frustrated and angry we got at that one person but then how we also had to lean into that relationship of trust that we didn't realize we had walked so far. Because when we took our blindfolds off and walked back to the camp we were staying at, we were extremely impressed that that person had gotten us safely and only one person went into a thorn bush and had to scream. But it was a, it was a classic re, uh, version of, of youth group trust and games. Now, if we know this understanding of Marco Polo, you can see where this has relationship with our story today, with the shepherd and the sheep. These games that we have played in our childhoods and maybe even in our um, Sunday school, just this morning, our kids were gathered down doing a trust walk where I was even blindfolded and I had to trust Elizabeth and she had to do the same. She didn't trust me as much as I trusted her because I ended up standing on a table and she had to try and find me when I called out her name. But it's more, these games, yes, are fun, but they are more about trust, aren't they? Do we trust the person that is calling out to us? I don't think any single one of our children this morning would have been putting on a blindfold if a random person walked downstairs and said, I'm going to call out your name, and you need to come find me blindfolded. We do have to have a relationship of trust with the people when we are committed to these kind of things, especially when we cannot see. It speaks to the relationship between the vulnerable person who 
cannot see the way ahead and the person who is responding to their call. How many of us also have had a voice in our lives that we have trusted? One of those voices that I have had in my life has been my mom's voice. And yes, I probably know my middle name very clear because my mom's my mom voice has shared it very clearly when she is frustrated or angry. But more often than not, it has been that tender voice and that consoling voice that my mom has offered. And I see it in Rachel's ability where I can be very stern and direct and she comes in to save our children from the wrath of Khan that I have been. And she provides them with a tender teaching moment of learning and care. How many of you can reflect on those moments that you've had with your mother's gentle voice calling your name? How many of you also have those memories of knowing your middle name clearly or your full name clearly because your mom was putting you in your place. It can cause us to joke and laugh, but it's also knowing that voice and trusting that voice that has given so many of us light and love. Do you hear the shepherd's voice in your life? What does Jesus say? When we walk, in our way beyond these walls, out these doors, are we listening to the shepherd's voice? What is Jesus saying? Now, I know that there are a lot of other voices that crowd our minds and our brains. If you turn on the television or you open up a paper still, or you just simply listen to conversation at McDonald's when you're enjoying your cup of coffee, you hear the many voices of distraction and of this world that have caused us some pain and darkness, right? The, the voices of politics, the voices of media, the voices of injustice, the voices of hurt and poverty and pain. These are the many voices that sometimes crowd our attention and we sometimes struggle to hear that voice of the Lord, that voice of love, that voice of light, that voice of clarity that we crave. For John, the gospel writer, he's writing in a way that he wants us to linger in this relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. And he wants us to linger in a metaphor of us as sheep and Jesus as the shepherd. The image of us as part of the flock. We belong to Jesus as a shepherd belongs as a caretaker to the sheep, protecting the gate against those for whom would do us harm. John suggests that Jesus knows each of us by name and that his flock knows his voice and responds to it. We follow him when we hear his call, when we hear these words of life from scripture, when we hear the voice of prayer in our surroundings, when we hear that inner monologue playing with us, telling us to go or to turn or to be something new, we hear that voice and we belong to Jesus. Jesus wants to be comforting to us. And it's beautiful to know that Jesus is with us, even though there are so many dangers that will attempt to collide with us and be in our vision and sight, as well as in our ears and in our thoughts. The shepherd not only watches over me and watches over you, but that the shepherd knows me and knows. As we have moved back into this relationship we receive in communion, it is bringing me back to a sense of pastoral responsibility in life. And there's something so significant, and I've shared this before, of how we share communion. And one of the gifts that my supervisor in Seattle showed me, didn't tell me this is what I should do, but Paul Hoffman showed that everybody belongs 
and that with that comes a sense of knowing someone's name. And I have always instilled it in me to know your names. And in these two years of pandemic, when I haven't been able to be in relationship and hand bread and hand wine over, it has been a difficulty because I think our names are so precious. The same names that we are claimed in the font, the same names that tell us that we belong, are the same names that I utter to you and share bread and wine, the true body and blood of Christ. We belong in this relationship. We are the sheep and Jesus is our shepherd. And when we hear that name, the name that identifies us, it gives us a sense of comfort and clarity and it's been a gift to know each one of you and to make you aware that you belong and that you are loved and that Jesus will be with you always. You see, the voice of the Good Shepherd is a voice that, that liberates rather than oppresses. It doesn't say, you need to do this and then maybe you'll be good enough to be one of my sheep. Quite the opposite. It says, you belong to me already. No one can snatch you out of my hand. Secured in this belonging, we are free to live the abundant life of which Jesus spoke earlier in this same chapter. In John chapter 10, Jesus says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Not just mediocre, not just a fluid hope that we would be able to share and receive. No, an abundant life that is so precious, so valuable, that it overflows beyond our brim and our hearts, and we give it to others. The abundant life of which Jesus speaks is not necessarily about abundance in years or in wealth or in accomplishments, or in status. It is life that is abundant in the love of God that is made known to us in Jesus Christ. Love that overflows to others. It is eternal life because it is a source of life that comes directly from God, who is eternal, who is the Easter proclamation that death has not stopped. Life is given to us all, and we belong. My, my prayer for you this week is that you listen to the shepherd's voice. Listen to those moments when Jesus calls your name. Know that in Jesus you belong, and no one can take that away from you. Many voices will come and go. They will steal your attention, will pull you away from God. But I pray that that shepherd's voice, although sometimes dimly, will penetrate through those moments of darkness, and you will become aware that Jesus is with you and in you, that your name is precious, you belong, and that you will find that light and love, and you will find all things in Jesus Christ is risen, and he is risen for you and for me, and we are the sheep that belong to the shepherd. Amen. Our hymn of the day is the king of love my shepherd is. We'll sing verses one and two.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Gentle shepherd, enable your church to respond to the voice of Jesus. Give us unfailing trust, unafraid to join in Jesus' work of renewing all things. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Feed your people at the table of creation. Prepare a safe place for those whose environments are dangerous or unhealthy, especially those making difficult journeys. Prosper your creation for the sake of every living thing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Warm the hearts of all who celebrate and all who mourn on Mother's Day. Accompany those yearning to be mothers. Help us to heal from broken family relationships and open us to receive your nurturing love from all who serve mothering roles in our lives. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Seek out those who weep while they await healing or consolation. We especially want to pray for those seeking healing for Karn and for Esther and for all those that we now name before you aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Set people in their path who can provide the care they need and wipe away every tear from their eyes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire the words of prophets and saints who employ innovative imagery to stretch our understanding. Send Christ to instruct us with motherly care. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enfold us in the great multitude of saints from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. Wash us in your saving grace every day, guiding us in your waters of life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and God's people say, Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a symbol of peace with those around us.
abundance of all that God has given us, you are starting to see some of the renovations that have been taking place in our sanctuary. Uh, these will be, um, there will be HVAC systems on both sides, um, and we hope to not have much more cosmetic changes within our pews and where they are. It doesn't look like anybody left from the back pews yet, so they're, they're not too frustrated with how pews have been moved. But if you notice, um, things will change just a little bit, and we give thanks for those gifts that have been received, allowing us to continue work and making things comfortable here at St. John's. Let us pray for those gifts. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign. And you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ Carol given for you. To the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ Robin given for you. John the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Sherry the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Kathy, the body of Christ given for you. 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 The body of Christ. The body of Christ, Lorna, given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Linda. The body of Christ, Lord, given for you. The body of Christ is given for you, Don. The body of Christ, John, given for you. Jim, the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Matt. The body of Christ given for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and in this cup we have tasted the new heaven and the new earth, where hunger and thirst are no, no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. And may God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Our final hymn is Have No Fear, Little Flock, verses 1, 2, and 4. 